Welcome to Incredible Idaho. I'm Roland Barris, standing in tonight as guest host for Wayne Walker. We begin our show tonight with a scene out of history. A herd of powerful bison on the run, heads bent and hooves flying, provoked to stampede by men on horseback. But this is no Wild West show. The horsemen are National Park Service employees, and the bison are animals that have wandered outside the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park and into an area where they are not welcome. Sort of control chaos. Right. Okay. Well, I'm there to kind of give the horses some shelter if they need it, and then also um, be a little bit more aggressive than the horses so that the vehicle the idea is to herd the bison into a narrow opening that funnels the animals into a smaller pasture. From there, they'll be pushed into a wooden corral for processing. The shaggy beasts have been grazing in this bigger pasture since they were captured roaming outside the boundaries of the park. They're going. The horsemen hoop and holler, chasing the bison from behind. Flanking the herd are the two vehicles, horns honking and tires spinning in the mud as they try to keep the buffalo headed towards the gate. But at the last minute, the herd turns, forcing the horsemen to retreat and begin again. Come on, come on, get in there. The second attempt fails also. It's quite clear these are wild animals unaccustomed to being harassed by man. They are large and aggressive, members of one of the only free-ranging bison herds remaining in the world. That is, if they stay inside the park. Outside the park, their freedom is curtailed, for it is feared the bison could pass on a cattle disease called brucellosis to domestic livestock, threatening the brucellosis-free status of the beef industry in neighboring states. This year has been especially difficult. More than a thousand buffalo have left the park in search of better winter range, and every one of those animals was either shot outright or captured and sent to slaughter in compliance with state law. A different fate awaits the animals being rounded up here today. Hey, Dan. No push him yet. We gotta get the gate closed. We'll lose them back. It's an easier operation in the confines of the smaller pasture. Let's go get him, Cobar. The buffalo have little room for escape and are funneled relatively smoothly through the gate and into a corral. Good job, guys. Yeah, there's, there's times where uh, it gets a little hairy in there. The horse is smart, smart enough to get out of the way. You just got to be smart enough not to hold him in a place where he shouldn't be. Okay, you're ready down there? The bison are separated into smaller groups by a series of gates. The first one is released and charges down the narrow passage into a squeeze chute designed for processing cattle. These animals have all been tested once before and come up negative for brucellosis, a disease that causes livestock and some wildlife to abort their fetuses. Today, they'll be tested again. Cow? Cow. Okay, we got a prager. Ear tags, and we'll start out with the white. Two cc's. Wildlife veterinarian Dave Hunter is looking for 36 pregnant female bison to be used in an experimental project testing the safety of a vaccine for brucellosis. Okay, move, move. Hey. We're going to give these animals three different doses of okay, a vaccine. Quick. One will be a placebo, and then two concentrations of uh, this RB51. And we're just randomly pick as they come okay. through, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so at the end of the day, hopefully is what we'll have. There's uh, 12 animals vaccinated with a high dose, 12 with a medium dose, and then 12 with a placebo. And then we're going to see how the vaccine affects them and affects their calves and whether it causes abortion. So. All right, give her a squeeze. It's not an easy process. The first step is to test for pregnancy. Wildlife veterinarian Tom Roth has the somewhat precarious job 
of reaching into the animal's birth canal while she's kicking and bucking. It must have come through. This one's pregnant. Pregnant. Once it's been determined that she is pregnant, the next step is to draw a vial of blood. Not, also, not. not an easy task. A little bit more. Just, just an inch or two would be enough. Although each of these animals has tested negative for brucellosis, the blood will be used to run a second test as a precautionary measure. This is field laboratory medicine, I guess. Inside the truck is the lab, a centrifuge and test kit where the delicate analysis of blood serum takes place. In the course of the day, four of the pregnant cows will test positive and be eliminated from the project. Pregnant? A stringent eradication program by the federal government will eliminate brucellosis in domestic livestock by 1998. At that point, it is believed the greater Yellowstone ecosystem will remain the only area in the United States where the disease is still prevalent, mainly in the wild elk and bison. But by the year 2010, a plan will be in place for eradication of the disease in that area's wildlife. And this safety study on the vaccine RB51 is one of the first small steps toward that goal. I sure like that little hippity hop when they come out. That's so cute. Antelope in Africa do that. They call it bronchin. The vaccine study will be conducted at the Wildlife Health Lab in Caldwell, Idaho. So the question arises, how do you move about 14 tons of wild bison 900 miles away? When we come back, bussing bison. <laughs>